esteemed fellow presenters and bigger audience. My name is Carlos Sanguilo. I am a second year economics and industrial organization student here at Warwick. And today, I have a confession to make. <laughs> Similarly to those minds concerned about interpreting the shape and magnitude of natural phenomena, as well as the trade-off between rationality and irrationality of human behavior, I have a certain passion for simplifying mathematical methods through visual tools. This is an area in which economists are keen, since it allows the analysis of different states of equilibrium by changing parameters. That is what we know as comparative statics. And comparative statics can be pretty complicated to work out numerically, especially in microeconomic, consumer, and producer theory, in which consumers with different preferences and firms with different technological capacities respond to changes in prices subject to their own budgets. Individual calculations can reach levels of complexity like the ones shown in the picture to my right. However, I choose to believe in the power of algebraic generalization and Wolfram codification to enhance the visual perspectives that learners from around the world can use, like the ones shown here in the picture to my left. Thus, in my rather extensive quest for simplicity, one thing led me to another, and over the summer, as part of my undergraduate research support team here at the university, and inspired by one of the chapters in the renowned textbook Essential Mathematics for Economic Analysis by Dunod Sitzheider, I algebraically derived and generalized constraint optimization solutions for infinite variables with infinite degrees of substitution, for which I coded 20 numeric and graphic calculators using Wolfram language to be used by university students and lecturers to better visualize microeconomic comparative statics. Through numeric inputs and slide bars, the user will be able to build their own intuition independently from class material to better understand how changes in parameters may change the shape of their relevant mathematical functions. So, to have a better understanding of the meaning behind such complex mathematics, let's look at some example. Lionel right here is a first-year student who has just arrived from Argentina and he needs to buy food. So, he goes to Tesco to buy chicken and rice. When he gets there, he starts to think about the optimal way in which he can spend the 15 pounds he has in his pocket. So, he sees that the price per unit of chicken bracelet is 1.5 pounds. The price per kilogram of rice is 2.25 pounds. He thenceforth, for future purchases, decides to assign 70 pence out of every one pound he has on chicken and the remainder 30 pence on rice. As a result of this income assigning decision being independent of the relative prices, he is said to have an elasticity of substitution equal to 1. And lastly, he normalizes his utility scalar factor at a value of 1 because this is a variable that exists within the model yet does not really alter consumption as long as its value is strictly greater than 0. So, he starts by drawing his original budget line representing the 15 pound limit that he has on consumption. He then constructs a consumption curve showing along all the possible combinations of chicken and rice that he can obtain given his preferences, which he shifts out just enough so that it intersects this budget line at a single point. That is what we call a point of optimality and in this context, a Marshalling demand. Hence, Lionel's Marshalling demands are as follows. 7 units of chicken bracelets and 2 kilograms of rice. Nevertheless, when he returns to Tesco in the next week to repeat his purchase, he finds out that the price per unit of chicken bracelet has increased to 2 pounds. So, he repeats this optimization process with a marginally pivoted inwards budget line representing the increase in the price of the good that is being measured in the horizontal axis, which is chicken bracelets. Thus, Lionel's new Marshalling demands are as follows. 5.25 units of chicken bracelets and 2 kilograms of rice. Nevertheless, all hope is not lost for Lionel, as he tells the situation to his lovers, who very lovingly decides to support him just this one time. And they see it fit for him to be able to return to his original purchasing power, that is, the 7 original units of chicken bracelet times the new price of 2 pounds, given a total expenditure on chicken of 14 pounds, plus the unchanged price and quantity for rice, which is 2.25 pounds per kilogram and 2 kilograms, giving a total of 4.5 pounds of expenditure on rice. So, 14 pounds plus 4.5 pounds is equal to 18.5 pounds. This is what we call as the Slotsky form of income compensation, which yields in this case a consumption curve which is just a little bit greater than the original blue one, which is given here in green. Thus, Lionel's Slotsky demands are as follows. 6.5 units of chicken breast with this, and 2.5 kilograms of rice. Alternatively, what his flatmates could have done instead of compensating him on his original purchasing power is to do so, but on his original blue consumption curve, 
This is a more mathematically complex way of compensating income, but it is also valid. And in this case, it's not such a high increase in income, it is only 0.15 pounds smaller. So, in this case, Lionel's Higgsian compensated demands are as follows. 6.4 units of chicken breast fillets and 2.4 kilograms of rice. The consumption perspective is not the only one that I analyzed in my research project, as I also derived these generalized constraint optimization solutions for the profit maximization problem for firms from two distinct yet convergent approaches. On the one hand, we have total cost minimization, yielding labor and capital input demands that are conditional on the firm's level of output. And on the other hand, we have the firm's optimal supply function, yielding labor and capital input demands that are unconditional on the firm's level of output, but conditional on the market price of the good that is being sold. Initially, my research only comprised the unitary case of the elasticity of substitution, which in economics we know as the comp douglas form, which is what we saw in the case of Lionel. Nevertheless, in thinking further as to what would happen when goods represented perfect complements, that is, elasticity of substitution equal to zero, and all the way to infinity, that is, goods representing perfect substitutes, I came across the constant elasticity of substitution form, which allows these infinite degrees of substitution, which is how I coded my calculators not only for infinite variables, that is, infinite goods or infinite input demands, but also for these infinite degrees of substitution. And in doing so, I attained another perspective that I did not really learn in class, but rather through my own independent exploration. And that is, using the constant elasticity of substitution form, it is only possible to represent normal preferences, and it is impossible to represent inferior preferences. That means normal preferences, that with a higher price we have a lower quantity demanded, and inferior price preferences, that with a higher price we have a higher quantity demand. Having set up the software pillars of my project, I am now delighted to announce that yesterday I have officially launched my social media campaigns in YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, Instagram and Twitter, and I will be posting content in revision guides, um, study sessions, coding tutorials, and in general supporting students who want to learn not only economics, but also applied mathematics and coding in Wolfram language. So this project will probably take a long time, uh, but you can follow my socials here using this link tree or by scanning this QR code, which I would and I would very much appreciate your support to anyone who's interested or anyone who has friends in these areas or just want to learn a little bit more because I want to expand this project not only for English speaking students but also for Spanish speaking students that is my native language and later on perhaps in French and German as well and then seeing how this project evolves next time. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you have a wonderful day today here at Beacon.